Hi everybody! I am here for our normal Tuesday tutorial and today we're going to make my famous, I call it famous, I get lots and lots of downloads of it every single month still after eight years, um, feather leaf block. Only this time we're going to make it a little different size. Um, I originally made it nine inches and this is going to be a six and a half inch version. And it's great for making um, something fun for fall for a friend. You could make them a um, mug rug or a little table topper with it. Um, this tutorial will make two blocks, but if you make four blocks, it makes a nice little square too. So um, that could be fun. So we will get started. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera around. Also, I noticed on one of the emails that I sent this morning, I sent out two emails this morning about this. And on one of them, I made a mistake with the cutting. It's only that I left out uh, two of the strips. So you need, you actually need a total of 14 strips. Hi, Phyllis. Um, you need a total of 14 strips. I told you 12, but that's because you also, you need two that are low volume. So, um... You, you need six warm, six cool, and then two low volume ones to make this block. Uh, let me show you what it will look like when it's done because I made these two this afternoon. This is what it'll look like, these fun little um, leaf blocks. And then when you make four, you can make a cute little block and I'll show you how to do that when we're done. But this is the block we're gonna make tonight. So, um, I told you to do, um, if you're, if you're on the club email, um, you need to add two extra strips of one and a half by six and a half, or I'm sorry, one and a half by seven and a half. Um, you need to add two light strips. I just left one line out of the instructions on the club email. I sent the right directions to everybody that's on the, um, wait list email, but. So these are one set. This is my um, warm tone set of strips that I'm doing. And I like to put them kind of in a color progression. And here is the cool tone strips that I did. Hi, Mary. <laughs> I'm happy you remembered too. Hi, Kim. So when you, when you um, lay out your strips to sew them together, make sure that you have um, whatever your light strip is. In this case, it's this one for me and this one. Um, make sure that they're not in the same place. So in this case, I put this one two up and this one three down. And um, the reason it makes a difference is you don't want them to be next to each other on your block because it makes it look weird. So see how the light one's here and then here on this one? And then on this one, it's here and here. If they're right next to each other, it looks weird. It looks like you've got like a cut out of your feather or out of your leaf. I call it the feather leaf block because it could be a feather or a leaf. No, there's no directions, Phyllis, just the measurements. The directions um, are, if you look in the, um, the description of this video, there's a link to my blog and there's written directions on my blog. If you go to the uh, tutorials page, you'll see a little picture of this block. It'll look a little different because it's different fabrics. And the written directions are on that, so you can find them there. It's a PDF you can download. Hi, Anne. So what we're gonna do is go and sew all of these strips together, and that'll take a few minutes because there's a lot of them, but uh, that's what we're gonna do first, and then we will continue making our block. So I'm going to go ahead and take these. I'm just going to stack these on top of each other and take them over to the sewing machine. I'm just using my phone today to do this video. So I don't have any magic uh, camera going on today. I have to just carry my phone over. I wanted to use my good sewing machine. I didn't want to use my icky sewing machine, so. And it's set up in a place where I can't get my camera, so. So we have to do this. Hold on 
just a sec. I'm going to move my holder so it points better at the sewing machine. There we go. So tell me what you guys have been doing this week. I've been super busy. I love this machine. It's so nice. So nice and smooth. Hi, Kathy. So we're just sewing all of these strips together. Basically making two strip blocks to start with. This is going to be the opposite direction that I originally did it, but I don't care. These two strips. Fusible applique. Okay, and then what do you do after you fuse it, Kim? Do you sew it with your machine? Do you sew it by hand? Or is it just fused and then the quilting holds it together? What do you do? Very interested. Hi, Sue. Wow, you've been busy, busy, haven't you? Shelly. <laughs> I was just going to tell you guys something and I can't remember what it was. Oh, I remember now. So you know that slice tool that I use for paper that's like an um, X-Acto knife, only it's ceramic? A couple of you bought one from me. Um, I actually got a call from the company that makes them and they want me to review their, they've decided, they've started making seam rippers. You know, those seam rippers that are like razors that are scary because they're razors. <laughs> well, they're making ones like that only with the ceramic blade. So they're a lot, um, a lot safer. So they sent me one of those. So... I'm going to do a little video review of it in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my mind off the crazy world too, Shelly. All that news. I don't need to hear it at all. Oh, that sounds like fun, Kim. I would do that kind of applique. <laughs> Actually, I like to do applique. I like hand work, but my hands are getting a little tired with all the EPP I've been doing lately. I think I've been, I've been trying to do, trying to work on a little bit of my Lucy Boston blocks every day. I um, I don't know how many of you guys heard, but I'm going to. Hi, Cynthia. That's my photographer, you guys, Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. Um, so I am. I just ordered some Liberty fabric, some Liberty Tantalon, and I'm going to have it in the shop in about a week or so, as soon as it gets here from Canada. The first bunch is coming from Canada, and the rest is coming from Italy. And so that's what I've been sewing my um, hand sewing projects with. 
and I pulled some out to show you guys at the end of this video so that those of you who aren't interested don't have to stay, but those of you who are can stay and see some of the prints that I'm going to have in the shop in a week or so. Pretty excited about it. Hi, Dee Dee. Did I make a mistake? I might have. No, no, this is right. Okay. Thought maybe I put the wrong strip on that one, but it's right. It's got a green background. Just looked very peachy because of all the peach flowers. Dee Dee really loves Liberty. You can tell, huh, Debbie? <laughs> no, hun, it's the Tana Lawn. I'm not going to get that quilting cotton stuff from Riley Blake. Um, not that it's bad. I mean, it's nice quilting cotton, but it's just, it's not the Tana Lawn. Come on, you got to have the Tana Lawn. If you're going to have Liberty, let's be real. You're gonna have Liberty, it's gotta be Tanalon. I'm super excited. And my husband has indulged my crazy and allowed me to do this and helped me to get funding for it and everything, so. That was nice of him, yes? Okay, so all of my strips are sewn together. And my phone's about to die, so I'm plugging in. If I get uh, disconnected, you guys, I will switch over to the camera. So um, give me a minute and I'll come back on. I shouldn't get disconnected. I'm trying to keep myself plugged in whenever I'm here at the table. So hopefully the phone will last long enough to get us through this. Okay, so I've sewn all the strips together. Now I'm just going to press them doesn't matter which way you press because they're not getting sewn together to each other. There, there'll be a strip of um, other fabric in between them. So just press them whichever way you feel like pressing them. And my iron's not hot yet, so I'm gonna have to wait on that for a second. He's a good dude, that Mr. D. I think I'll keep him. You know what's super exciting is a lot of the new ladies in the club have told me that they are new quilters or that they haven't quilted in a lot of years or that they've sewn a lot but hadn't, haven't done a lot of quilting. So I think it's so much fun that we have so many new sewists out there because of the pandemic. I mean, you know, if something bad like this has to happen, at least something good is happening because of it, you know, everybody who's getting to work on their hobbies and do things that they haven't gotten to do in a long time or learn something new. I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, I have to make new space too. As a matter of fact, I'm looking to rent a space. Um, I'm looking for office space right now. Okay, so here they are all pressed and ready to go. So what we're gonna do is, where's my little, oh my goodness. Can't find my, I just had my small ruler. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now all we're gonna do is um, cut these on the diagonal. And so what I do is cut one direction on one of them, and then the other one I'm gonna cut the other direction. It won't matter really because I didn't do 
one time I did a rainbow and then it mattered because I wanted the two rainbows to go the same, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to go one direction on one and the other direction on the other, just so I keep the habit. You guys, I swear, I was just standing here working <laughs> with my rotary cutter and it has now disappeared. I always make sure I have everything out and ready to go before I get started, and then half the time it's not where I think it's supposed to be. Okay, so I've cut these apart on the diagonal, so be careful because they're gonna be a little squidgy now because they're cut on the diagonal. So don't stretch them. I'm cutting the other one on the diagonal. And what you want to do is take your two pieces. Now make sure that your lines are going up. So that means this one has to go this way too. So that the lines are going up on the diagonal. And then your other, the, in this case my blue ones, the other ones, the lines will go this direction. So you want your lines to go like this. Otherwise it's not going to look like a leaf. So they're going to go like that, and this is going to be our stem fabric. And what we're going to do is take this side, and I'm going to flip it over, and I want to put the top. So we are not going to sew along the edges of this strip. We're going to sew it crooked or um, diagonally. So you want to put your point, your top point, a quarter of an inch in from the edge on the top and let me make sure you can see the bottom of this and then on the bottom you want it to just be at the edge on the bottom so a quarter of an inch away from the edge on the top and just at the edge on the bottom so you're going diagonally across that strip and I'm going to put a pin a couple pins in to hold it Melissa. Hi, Jamie. Oh, thank you. It's been a very popular one to download and use. I let anybody use it for whatever they want, but a lot of people download it off of my um, blog. And I probably get two or 3,000 people downloading it every month still after all these years of having it there. So, okay. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to, oh, actually, let me get the second one done. I was only going to do one, but I'm going to get the second one done too. Because when we're done, I'll show you what the four blocks I'll put together look like. So again, we're going a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And this is um, right side to right side on the top. And you can just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And right at the edge on the bottom. And I'm going to put one more right in the middle. Okay. Go back over to the sewing machine. We don't have our Presto Changeo uh, cameras going on this time, but that's okay. So now I'm just sewing a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the leaf fabric. Don't pay any attention to your um, stem fabric. Just sew a quarter of an inch away from the leaf fabric, the edge of the leaf fabric, and don't. Um, pull on it because it's going to be a little stretchy because we've cut it on the diagonal on the bias. So just be a little ginger with it so it doesn't get stretched. And the second one. Okay, 
I sewed up the pins. I know I'm the worst. I usually tell people not to do that, but this machine will go through anything. And if it hit a pin, it would just keep going. <laughs> I normally take them out, but trying to reach around my uh, camera holder and everything at the same time is difficult. So I didn't take them out. And my pincushion was over here at the table and not over there. So, but do as I say and not as I do in this case. Okay, so now all I've done is just cut them apart because they were sewn together. And now I'm going to just cut the, cut along the edge of the seam allowance on the leaf fabric just to get rid of that extra. Oop. Just to get rid of that extra stem fabric on both of the pieces. So now what we have is this, and I'm gonna press these. And I press toward the leaf fabric because um, stems normally recede, and so I just, that's what I do. So just pressing toward the leaf fabric. So it's just like that. And like that. Now this side is easier because you are actually going to use the edge of the stem fabric. So just match up right along the edge, match up your point. I'm gonna show you close up. Match up your two points here up at the top so that they're in the same position there. Putting it right along the edge of the stem fabric. Right sides together. And I'm doing the same thing on this side. Trying to decide if I want to move that up. I think I'm going to move this one up a little bit. See how it's hanging off the edge right there? We're going to trim it up afterwards, and so it won't hurt anything that if it's not, if the point at the top is not in the same place because it's going, it's crisscrossing at the top anyway. I just want to make sure that it's a little closer to being square in the middle. So now we're just going to go and do a seam down each side again. This is a super simple block, but it looks really confusing in, in the written directions. That's why I think having a video makes it so much easier. It's going to be so cute for fall. I'll make a cute little fall quilt. There you go, Kathy. I took the pin out. <laughs> so 
sorry that I'm moving the camera. It happens. Oops, did it again. Sewed over the pen. It's <laughs> concentrating more on what I was sewing than on where the pin was. Here's our moment of truth. Make sure that we've uh, got these. Yep, looks good. Looks good. Okay. So now I'm just going to press this again, pressing toward the um, toward the leaf fabric. Now this will not come out square, but don't freak out. Kind of looks like a fan. See? Okay, here's where the magic happens. Take my square up ruler. And what I want to do is, here's my diagonal line right here. I'm going to square this up to six and a half inches. So what I want to do is keep that diagonal line somewhere in the vicinity of the stem. And then I'm just going to move this around until I make sure that I've got six and a half inches all the way around. So right here, I'm off by a quarter of an inch. I'm going to come down a little bit. I'm within six and a half here and six and a half there, so I can cut it right here. The um, diagonal line is right there, right down through the middle of where that stem is. It doesn't matter where in the stem it is. Um, on this one, on this one, it was right along the edge of the stem. It doesn't matter because these are leaves and leaves are not perfect. And so it doesn't have to be perfectly right down. <laughs> Just tried to cut that right in the worst part of my mat. So I'm going to have to redo that. Um, so it doesn't matter what part of the stem it's in as long as you're within six and a half all the way around and that diagonal is somewhere where the stem is. So that's good. Okay, so there's that side. Now I'm going to flip it around. And what did I do? I just got dirt on here from something. Weird. Well, I'm going to have to figure that out. What if it's from my iron? No, my iron's not. Well, maybe it is the iron. Oh, I wonder if my, oh, shoot. It was, it was on the iron. Darn it. Okay, so what happened was I'm using a little ironing mat that has a handle on the side and the handle is nylon and the iron must have been sitting on the edge of the handle and got a little bit of the nylon, the black nylon stuff on it. So I have to fix that. But anyway, there's our square. So once it's all squared up, looks nice. Yeah. And here is the second one. Oh, this one's, oh yeah, this one's got a little bit on it too. No, it doesn't. That's just a piece of thread. Hmm. I don't know. That's weird. Okay. So diagonal line is down through the stem. This is inside the line up here. We've got six and a half here and six and a half here. So we're good to go. Okay, 
So these are both squared up now to six and a half inches. And now we are going to take our two and a half inch squares and we are going to mark them on the diagonal. What else do we do with two inch, two and a half inch squares? <laughs> Feels like I do that with every single block. I should just say same second verse, same as the first, right? So I'm just going to mark it diagonally. I just use a pencil because I like that nice thin line. So now we're just going to take these and put them here on the corners. And this is what's going to make that nice leaf shape. Mechanical pencils like the perfect thing to mark your fabric with? I think so. I mean, you don't want to use them somewhere where it's going to show, but on the back of your fabric that's just going to get sewn on, it doesn't matter. That's the line I'm sewing on, so nobody's going to see it. It's not even in the seam allowance. You have to turn that down if that music comes on on Facebook they'll they'll shut me down buddy I don't know if you guys could hear the music but my husband had music on and I don't want to get in trouble mm -hmm. And you just sew right on the line. Can't hear it? Oh, good. I'm glad. I just don't want Facebook to shut me down. Because he has music on in the background. And then they turn you off for like a month or something. They don't let you do any live videos. And then they monitor everything you do afterwards. Okay. So I've just sewn down the diagonal line on both of these. And I am going to trim the seam allowance at a quarter inch. I was actually going to make this with Liberty, Liberty tonight, but I didn't get my act together in time to get it cut, but I would have done it. I think it would have been super cute to make these out of Liberty. A lot of the shops um, send little strips. They wrap up their... I'm so upset about that. I hope that comes off. Um, they wrap up their fabric in little like one-inch strips, and you could use those to make your um, little strips. So there's one. And 
And here's the other one. What, seriously, Melissa? Okay. So let me show you what you can do with your four blocks. This is the way I put them together. If I use four of them, I put a little cornerstone in the middle. I'll turn that over so the flower is right side up. And then I use a two and a half inch strip. Or this is what I did when I used eight inch blocks, but maybe a one inch strip would be good for this. Or a one and a half, maybe. But it doesn't look bad with a two and a half either. So you can make your block like that. Here, let me hold this up so you can see it better. Yeah, because it's copyrighted. So you could do it like this. And actually, I think because these are smaller blocks, it would look better with a smaller, maybe a smaller sashing. see like that or you could hold on I'm gonna plug in just in case you could take them and put them together just like this and make a little mug rug you could put a little piece in between there's lots of different things you could do one going one way, one going the other way. Like that. Or like this. You could do it like this and put a, put a um, strip on the top. You could do some kind of embroidery right here. Anyway, it's super cute and it makes a really cute block and you could also put them on point and put six and a half inch blocks here and here of just plain fabric if you wanted to. Or put them all on point like this. Sorry, trying to do this and point the camera at the same time. Like that, ooh, that's pretty. I like that, what do you think? I think that's a good way to do it. Anyway. They're pretty, hope you like them. And now that we're done with that, and if y'all need to leave, you can go, because I finished the tutorial. Um, would you like to see some of the Liberty fabrics that I have coming soon to the shop? Say yes, if you'd like to see some Liberty fabrics. So these are some of the um, classics that I have ordered. I also have some of the seasonals ordered. So, um, you know, the ones that you've been seeing me make the um, Lucy Boston's out of with the little dogs and the bunny rabbits. I have, hopefully, if I've gotten my order in in time, they're, they're down to like 10 meters of a couple of them, but I'm getting them, hopefully, so excited about that. So these are some of the classics that I have ordered. They'll be coming really soon. Should be about a week. You want to see them up close and beautiful? <laughs> this is one of my favorites. This one's called Danjo. So pretty. Yes, actually, I will be doing bundles of everything from fat sixteenths up to fat quarters, half yards. Um, so fat sixteenths, fat, fat eighths, fat quarters, and half yards. And then um, as far as what you can buy yardage-wise, I will be selling it down to a quarter yards. Um, right now with the tilde, you can only buy down to a half yard, but I'm having them change over my website to make it so you can buy quarter yards because... Um, Liberty's so expensive 
um, I want you to be able to be to buy be able to buy quarter yards. This one is called Strawberry Thief. Do you see the little bird? And he's stealing strawberries. He's got a little strawberry in his mouth right there. See it? Isn't that the cutest? I love this one. Isn't this pretty? This one's called Wiltshire Bud because it's very small compared to the other Wiltshire print prints. And this one I love to fussy cut. So I, I'm buying like pretty much every color of this one. Here's one of them. Let's see if I can find some of the others so I can show you. Here's the blue one. And it's so great to fussy cut because it's got all these really fun prints. And so if you take these and you fussy cut them and you put them together, it makes really neat designs in the centers of your blocks. There's that one. Here's the gray one. They're all the same prints. It's called Loden. It's one of my favorites. Here's the blue and green. I love this one. I love these colors. They're so pretty. I wish you guys could see this and feel it. It just, it feels like silk. It's so soft. It's so amazing. And then here's another one that's similar to that, like in style. It's called Mortimer and it is so fun to fussy cut this one as well. It's great for EPP. And because it's so fine and it is, um, so finely woven. This piece I've had forever. This is a piece of Betsy and I've had it, I don't even know how long. I made a bag out of it. You can see I cut a bag out of it. And I mean, you can make it fray, but it's hard to make it fray. It just, it is so amazing. Yeah, you were just going to ask me that, weren't you? So barely and like I, I have a hard time making it fray you can see there's fraying but I mean I have to really pull at it and only like one or two little threads comes off of the edge so it's awesome for doing EPP with right that's what I was trying to say because I've had this piece for a really long time and I have cut I cut that bag out of it and you can see even where I cut that bag out of it and even on the bias and everything, you don't see any fraying. So still just showing you the ones, some of the classics that I bought. It is, um, Shelly, I have to figure it out because they haven't told me how much the, um, the import cost is yet because I, it has, I have to pay import export fees and shipping, which is really weird. It's going to be around, and I'm just saying approximately 36 a yard. Um, I think, well, I'll sell it for, you know, I'm not going to sell it for more than what everybody else is selling it for. So I think it's like nine fifty a fat quarter or a quarter yard. I love Betsy. It's my favorite print. There's some more Betsy. I love this print. It's all different colors, which is super fun. Isn't this sweet? I love this one. This one's called Elysian Day. So these are just a bunch of the ones that I had in my stash that the way that um, Liberty works is they have um, classics that they print always and they sometimes they'll change up colors, but they always they have classics that they do all the time and then they just change colors. Um, so a lot of these have been around since the 30s. Um, this fabric company has been around. Well, they've been doing fabric since the 1800s. Um, and then season, seasonally, they do, you know, 50 or 60 other prints dur um, during different seasons. So you'll have the autumn winter collection, which I'm buying um, now, and then there'll be a spring summer collection. And then they do capsule collections where they have about 25 prints that they do two or three times a year too. 
So the one with the little dogs and rabbits that I've been using for um, my EPP, that's one of the capsule collections. So there's very little left of it. I only There's only like 10 meters left of a couple of them and I told her to order it for me and hopefully I'll get it. So hopefully I'll get some of that so I can share it with you guys. Um, but anyway, so these are just a few of the ones that I had in my own stash that I got um, that I've ordered already that should be here next week. So um, just thought I'd show those to you so you could see kind of an idea of what's coming. And of course, you all will be the first ones to know when it gets here. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the um, tutorial for the, here, let me turn the camera around so you all can see me. Hope you like the tutorial for the leaf block and um, I hope you enjoyed looking at the Liberty and the one with the bright orange flower I don't know honey um, let me let me turn it around the camera again and point it at this and you can tell me do you mean this one I'm glad you liked it Jamie is this the one you're talking about, Shelly? Or was it this one? This one's actually red, so I don't think that's the one you're talking about. No, not this one. Bright orange flower. I'm not sure which one you meant. Hmm. That one? That one? These are all red to me, so that one. This one's called Summer Bloom. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. Look like after Daisy, like this one. Not sure which one you're talking about, hun. Sorry. Corner. <laughs> That's how I am, Loretta. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> it was so hard to get. Okay, so there were probably there were probably three hundred prints to choose from, and I had to choose just like about a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty. And it was so hard to decide. Blue background. This one? Those are birds. Blue background. Hmm. I'm sorry, Han, I don't know which one you're talking about. And because it's a, it's under this one. No. This one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, hun. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, this one. Okay. This one is called, shoot, I don't remember, but I can let you know later. I'll remember later and then I will let you know. <laughs> I've looked at so many and they're all flowers and it's so hard to remember the names of them. Some of them I know just because I've, I've been playing with them for years. This is a new one to me, but um, I will let you know when I look it up, okay? Okay, so anyway, you guys, I will, let me turn this around again. I will see you again next Tuesday, or I will see you on Thursday if you're in the club because we are going to have a chat on Thursday because I miss your faces. So I will talk to you later, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.